felt like you were in the dark, as we talked about earlier, before that moment of clarity, it's confusing, perhaps aggravating, maybe even a little angry, right? I've had uh, instances on my job where I'm trying to fix a problem, and you spend hours and hours. I pulled a lot of all-nighters in my life trying to fix servers and fix network issues that impact a wide range of people and services and you have to get it done really fast you're under a lot of pressure to fix it and you have that moment where you just get angry man i've worked on this for x amount of hours i've done everything that i know to do i've troubleshot i've done everything i know to do to fix this but i simply can't get there from here and as you work and you work and you work and you get tired and you become frustrated, you get angry because you can't get from the dark to the light. Mm. But I can tell you that every single time that I have faced a problem like that on my job, there comes a point on the job where suddenly I go, Eureka, there it is. And many times it's been right in front of me the whole time. Many times the answer was right there. But I was making the problem more complicated than it had to be. I was trying to make it harder than it had to be because the answer was right in front of me and I had to step back and look at the big picture so I could grab hold of the answer. Mm -hmm. So you have that point of frustration, anger, and you know, getting aggravated. If we'll just step back, the answer is usually right in front of us. And Peter finds himself on this Easter morning, he's in the dark. He's frustrated. He's wondering what in the world is going on. If you look with me again to verse 12, as I said, just the bottom half of that verse, it says, When he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Now the Greek word there translated marveling. It can also be translated wondering or wonder. So it can, it's translated marveling here, but it also can be translated wonder and wondering. And you've got to look at the context to understand which it means. So I want to look at a couple places in scripture where the same Greek word is used. We first can find it in Luke chapter 2, verse 33. And this, uh, this is when uh, Simeon took Jesus when he was just a baby and, and prophesied over him of all the things he was going through in front of Mary and in front of Joseph. He took the baby and he prophesied his whole future. And it says in verse uh, 33 of chapter 2 of Luke, and his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. You think they understood everything that that man said? Not a chance. They had no frame of reference at that point. They didn't understand what they, he was saying about their child. So they marveled, but they were wondering. They were confused. They knew that what he had said, the words, he underst they understood the words, but they wondered what the meaning was. They didn't know for sure. Then we find in Luke chapter 8, verse 25, when the boat was on the water, and uh, it was rocking and the storm and the winds were raging. Uh, and Jesus uh, came out and he calmed the storm. And verse 25 says, he said to them, where is your faith? And they said they were afraid and they marveled, saying to one another, who then is this? That he commands even winds and water and they obey him. Again, that same Greek word translated marvel. And the question lets us know what that marvel meant, right? The question they say is, who then is this? That he commands even winds and water and that they obey him. They were amazed, but they were also wondering. They were confused, right? How is this possible? How did this happen? How did he simply speak to the winds and the waves and they stood still? And then finally in Luke chapter 11, verse 14, when he cast out demons, it says now he was casting out a demon that was mute. And when the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke and the people marveled. Again, that same Greek world word. They were amazed, but they were also confused. What just happened here? This We see something happen. Jesus did something. But what does it mean? What is happening here? They could not understand what was going on. And then there are many examples in Scripture that it seems when people were experiencing out of the ordinary uh, experiences that they responded with a deep, deep sense of wondering. Situations that they would not see every day. Situations 
that didn't make sense to them. They knew something happened, but they didn't know quite sure what happened and what it meant. And so they wondered to themselves. And so according to our text that we read, uh, Peter was feeling that way on Easter morning. The Bible tells us that he that when the word came back from the ladies who had seen the angels, that Peter and John took off running. Mm -hmm. Only two of the remaining 11 did that. Those two brothers started running as fast as they could to the tomb. And in just like Peter fashion, John got there first. And when John got there, he just kind of <laughs> poked his head in. But when Peter got there, Peter burst right through the door, right on inside. And when he went outside, he saw the linen clothes, the things that they had wrapped them, the grave clothes. They saw it laying in a pile on the floor. And then the cloth that they used to cover his head had been picked up, neatly folded, and laid down. So that's what Peter saw, saw when he walked through the door. Now, at this time, he stopped thinking resurrection. At this time, he stopped thinking that God's raised him from the dead. To them, the resurrection wasn't going to happen to the end of this world. In fact, some didn't even believe in the resurrection. But those who did, they thought it was happening way at the end of time. When everything was said and done, that was the big, you know, crescendo. Is that those who were in God would be resurrected bodily. So he wasn't thinking resurrection. So he looks in and he's like, what is going on here? What happened? How did that stone get moved? And so you've got to know that he's only beginning to process saying, well, they must have taken the body. What happened? He was here. He's not here. But then he goes, why in the world would they unwrap him first? Why in the world did they take his little thing off his face and fold it all nice and neatly and lay it there? He had a ton of questions and could not process what was happening. He had those range of thoughts and he had trouble getting to the conclusion that Christ had risen from the dead. It's sort of like a piece of art. Anyone here interested in art? I don't care for art. It makes my head hurt. Uh, but I'm not sophisticated enough. Perhaps there are those of you who have a sophisticated palate. But you love to look at art. Well, many times when you look at a piece of art, you don't know what it is. Right? You look at it and you're going... Okay. You know it's art. It's got lots of colors. Someone put a lot of time and effort into it, right? They put a lot of energy into it. It came from their imagination. But when you look at it, you can't appreciate it because you're going, what in the world is it? It's not a dog. It's not a person. It's not a bowl of fruit. What is it? Right? Because you're not the artist. That's right. I'm not the artist. I don't know. I'm left in the dark because I'm not the one who painted it. Mm -hmm. I don't know the art. I know it means something, but because I'm not the artist, I cannot judge what it is or the quality of it or what it means. And the same thing applies to our lives. We know that or Peter, he knew something happened. He knew something big had happened, but he could not understand yet what had happened because God was the artist. God had put his stroke of the brush over time and space and history. He had painted this portrait of Jesus Christ from Genesis until this point now. He was architecting and painting this beautiful portrait. And when God painted, they didn't have the privilege of the New Testament like we had. So all they saw was a partial painting. They were in the dark. They didn't understand where it was going at that particular time because they didn't know the artist. And so today, what in your life are you wondering about? What are you stuck in the dark about? What is it in your life today that you want to ask God? Are you in the middle of processing pieces from a mistake or from a tragedy? Or from an event in your life where you just can't seem to understand what good could come from it. I like what Dr. Tony Evans said in a message I listened to this week. Friday was a bad day for Jesus. Bad day. Really, really bad day. It was a bad day physically. It was a bad day emotionally. And it was a bad day spiritually. He had the worst day ever in the history that could possibly imagine. 
He let his creation beat him, drag him around, and hang him on a cross, and he died. And he, he didn't know what death was. He was God. Bad day. And he stretched imagination. Now, most of us don't even have a quarter of that bad a day, and we're giving up. Amen. We want to quit. We're wondering, God, why did you let this happen? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? Why is this going on? Blah, 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 blah. I ask God that all, all the time, all the time. God, why? I can't see how the pieces line up. I can't see how the picture comes together. I can't see what you are doing. It doesn't make sense. I'm wondering what is going on. I want to believe that God has a bigger plan and a bigger purpose for what's happening in my life. I know that that's what it's supposed to be. Amen. But I can't see it because of what I'm in the middle of and what I'm experiencing currently in my life. And so I sit to myself wondering what is going on. But the great thing is that even though Jesus' Friday was absolutely horrible, Sunday everything changed. In three days, everything changed. If we'll just Amen. hold on to when uh, in our life when things are going wrong, we need to know on our very worst day, that's not the last word. The last word is when Jesus Christ says it's the last word. Amen. And the one who says it's the last word has control over every, every aspect of my life, every area of your life. He sets high above, way above, all the way over every problem, everything that you and I might think. Amen. He has the last word. Amen. Your Friday may be horrible, terrible. Maybe you want to give up, lie down, and die. But Sunday, 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 everything can change. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. We hope that you enjoyed it and were blessed by it. Each month we have people from all over the world who listen to the messages made available. If you've been blessed by this ministry, would you consider making a donation of any amount to help support us as we continue to reach a loss for Christ? Donations can be made online at www.reviveoc.org or by check at Revive Outreach Church, 411 Chatham Heights Road, Suite 101, Fredericksburg, Virginia, 22405. Thank you for your prayers and your continued support. May God richly bless you.